Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm just going to go through the workflow of post-processing data from the ProMark 3 GPS, which is a DGPS that in the fact that it allows you to record raw data, which we can use to post-process after we've collected it using base station data to get a more accurate positioning as well as getting to metrics of the spatial error around our point. So, I'll take you through the workflow starting from GPS system to the ProMax 3 GPS. Very robust, relatively simple piece of equipment that allows us to collect that DGPS data. The most important thing is that you must enable the ProMax 3 to record raw data and you do that in the menu section of the mobile map of field program. Just tick that on and it will record a raw data file. Then what you need to do is make sure that you're looking to the SD card so that you can take the SD card out and put it into your computer. In the past we would have connected the GPS up using a COM port onto the computer and downloaded it directly from the GPS. But in this workflow now we just record our data to the SD card, remove the SD card, and then we copy that into a folder on our computer. So you can see here that I've got three folders that I've created for this particular individual job. The first one is raw data from SD card. And if we have a look at the files within here, you can see that we've got a job6.mmj and a job6.r00. These two files are what you must download for each individual job. Single job is a single recording period within the GPS. So this encompasses the raw data in the r.00 file and it encompasses a mobile map of office job file that contains the point and the uh, recording of the comments on particular points, lines or polygons, features that you've recorded. So we'll open up the Mobile Mapper Office program. Now there's two programs. Mobile Mapper Office 4, which is for newer GPS systems, like the um, Mobile Mapper 6, etc. and so on. And Mobile Mapper Office 3.40a, which is the older version that works with the Pro, the Pro Mark 3 and the Mobile Mapper DX. Okay? Now, the two files that we've downloaded from the SD card will not actually allow us to work in a post-processing environment within the program. What we have to do is transfer the data from the GPS, even though it's already on our computer. And we do that by going to this little icon here, which is Upload Job. But we want to click the drop-down arrow and click Download from GPS. It brings up this file here, this little program, which is Mobile Mapper Transfer. And we've got two panes, pane on the left and pane on the right. The pane on the left is our stimulated GPS, which is, should point to the raw data folder that you've created on your computer. You should only see a single job in here, job six, single file in that window. And then we need to go to a new folder, which I'm gonna call transferred data. And all I'm going to do is drag this from the left to the right. If you do it the other way around and go from right to left, it won't work. Essentially what this procedure is going to do is convert our data into format that we can work with in the Mobile Mapper Office program. So just drag it over and release. And you can see here that it's doing some transfer and conversion. Finish. All we do is click the red X to close that down. And then we'll go straight into the GPS. So you see here that it gives you an error saying that the GPS data is of low enough quality, etc. But we tend to just ignore that message for most of our observations. It comes up almost every single time. And then you see at the bottom now we have this window. If you were just to load the mobile map of office job in, you wouldn't get this window down at the bottom. You would just see the point in the map. It's very important that you do the transfer procedure in order to allow yourself to work 
with the data at hand. So from that we can start zooming in and doing everything we want to with our particular piece of information. There's our point as we zoom in. So this time bar essentially shows us the period of the data that we want to download a base station data for. Oh. Now we can get base station data by using another GPS that's recording raw data and we can use that. Or we can get the data from the Ordnance Survey which is the British mapping institution that collects permanent base station data from sites around the UK. And that's what we're going to do. So if we're interested in data from 10 o'clock to um, quarter past 11 on the 30th of August. And we're going to go and find that from the Ordnance Survey website. And we just type in this link here, ordnancesurvey.co.uk forward slash GPS forward slash OS dash net dash rhinox dash data. And it gives us this page here. Now you can type in a search location, but they've very, very neatly provided us with a new map that we can click on now. And we can just copy the coordinates that we want. So we're going to go for an app data here. And we're just going to copy this and paste it into the search location. Let me just copy it. And it needs to be in a particular format for it to recognize. And then we just want one station. We don't want any more than one. And then our date is the 30th of August, 2014. We start, start, start time an hour before and end time an hour after our observation. And then project name, Ranix. Data, you can change that to whatever you want. If you're downloading more than one, for example. So you see that it's now highlighted the an app data in in green and it says it's available. So all we need to do now is just click download. Downloading it here and just open that file. And I'll copy it into OX Rhinox and broadcast data. So that's the first part of our Rhinox slash base station data. If you look down at the bottom of the OS page again, you see that it says a new satellite navigation data is no longer provided. And you can go to this link here and learn about how to download it. So we go to a similar one here, we just go to the FTP site which allows us to download the ephemeris data which is essentially the position of all the satellites around the world. And we need to download it. So the format it is in is in year followed by a Julian day which equates to the day that we want to download. So you can just go to a Julian day table which I found online Look at August, scroll down to 30th, and see it's day 242. Yeah. And the date is also very helpfully just in when this file was created. So we can just go into there as well. 242, and then we have these different folders. So this is where it starts getting tricky. This is why we just need to have a quick check and see what some of this stuff means. So you can see in this link here, code table, it tells us what we should be looking for. So we go to daily, and then we need to find this particular folder here, year, year, G, and then we're looking for this particular kind of file, day, day, it's a Julian day, year, year, it's a year. So we need to go to YYG. Scroll down to find the broadcast ephemeris, which is BRDC. And then we've got the Julian Day, which should be 242. Zero. 
13 G dot Z. 2520 13G.z. So just click on that to allow the computer to download it. Copy it over into our broadcast ephemeris data and you see that it's got dot z on it, which is a zip file. So we use 7-zip to extract it. Yeah, so you want to download a 7-zip program for Windows. Extract here. Download that into the G. So with this file now, we have no longer, we don't need this one anymore, so we can just delete it. Yeah. The next step is to make sure that two file names are the same. So, rename this file, and we're just going to copy the file name before the file extension and paste it into our broadcast ephemeris file. Okay, so we should have two files, same file name, different extensions 14G for the broadcast ephemeris, 14O for the RAN data. And we're now having prepared that, go back to the mobile map office program and we're going to now post process our data that we've collected here. So we see on the bar down the bottom, if you follow my instructions, you should end up with this. We click Add Reference Station. We we'll navigate to our OX Rhinox broadcast from this data. We we'll select the Rhinox file that we downloaded and click Open. And you see that we're going to go a conversion for all this. It says that there will be some errors potentially. Click OK. You see that our Time bar is overlapping now of our job against our ephemeris data that we collected. It's very important that they overlap. If they don't overlap, then you either need to download more of the Rhinox data or you can't put it in. So you need to make sure that your job overlaps. Now it's very important that when you do download the Ordnance Survey data that you get it within 30 days of actually collecting your data with your GPS because after 30 days OS, OS delete that data and then it gets archived somewhere where it's very difficult to access. It's very important that you download your data even if you're not going to process it at this time because you want to, you download data, store it for later so that when you work with it you have that information there. So the final job now is just to click this little icon at the end which is process data and okay, we're just going to go the post processing procedure and it will give you a prompt saying all your positions have been corrected and click OK so the final step is just to see exactly what it's done And if you click on our point, you see that our accuracy estimation is 0.66 meters against 0.97 for the vertical, and that our data has been first processed. So, very accurate point there, but we had recorded that single point for over an hour. So now we've done that, we're going to export our data into something that we can use. So we've got File, Export, and we can save it as a shape file if we want, and we can create a new file there, which is exported, corrected data, and then export. Have a quick look. And you see that we now have a shape file, which has got our differentially corrected data, as well as the, the height that we can now use for working with. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you've learned something there. You can see our stats on the side for the position and for the vertical height as well, whatever you want to do. You can save the job by clicking Save As.
You're done.